Hey guys and welcome to Matt's Reef Tank. Today we're going to do a little overview on my fish tank, see if my parameters are correct, and we are going to see what is inside this case. Now if you've been watching, you know that I've been having some real problems with Aptasia. And this little box is gonna help me to solve that problem. Let's open the box. Here it is, folks. Kinda looks like a, uh, like a lightsaber. This is what we're gonna use to kill Aptasia. So this is a two watt laser. This is about the high end of what I was told could be used to kill Aptasia. You can actually use it to light a match. It's pretty powerful. As a matter of fact, in the box here, we have a pair of protective glasses and then uh, a bunch of these tips. <laughs> I think these tips are for if you are going to uh, use it as a, uh, like a fun toy or something. Let me show you how it works though. First, we take the end cap off. We put in the batteries. One, two, and then put the end cap back on. Now, the laser laser is just a point. But if you put these little tips on, you get different effects with them. For example, this one is, is a line. The one that we're only gonna be focusing on is that single beam. That's where you get the most heat concentrated on a single point. That's what's used for killing the Aptasia. Now, I used this laser yesterday, and I took video of me using it yesterday, so I'm gonna to flip to yesterday now to show you what I did, and then I'll come back to show you the end results and see if that Aptasia is still there or if it's gonna need another dose of the laser. Hey guys, uh, Matt here with Matt's Reef Tank. I know I'm supposed to record this on Fishy Friday, but today is actually uh, Laser Thursday. I don't know, I'm not gonna rhyme it. I wanted to play with the laser at the office tank. It's a nice night, the office is empty, so I'm gonna use the laser today. I'll edit it into the footage tomorrow. There's an Aptasia that's just staring at me and just wants to be taken out. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do my thing and see if it works. Everybody asks me what camera I use. Well, for those really, really zoomed in shots, I use the 100 millimeter macro focus lens on a 5D Mark III body. The subject of today's extermination is that little bad boy right there. He's facing the uh, outer glass, so it should be pretty easy to uh, record and take him out. So first things first, I am gonna turn the pumps off so that the water stops flowing. I figured for the experiment, the deader the water, the less movement, the better. It'll make it so that the heat from the laser beam will really cook that little guy and I won't have any like water flowing past and removing that heat. So uh, probably the best way to go. I'm gonna turn off my auto fill. The other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn off the lights in the office so that all of the light is coming off of the fish tank. It'll give me a, a really nice effect. All right. I love when all the lights are off and it's dark. It's the coolest effect in the fish tank. And you can see a really nice reflection in the, in the glass. Super cool. All right, here we go. Let's give it a try. Okay, when I first started shooting it, it did sort of collapse down. The tentacles were moving like they were being burned. Uh, I've been firing at it for about two minutes now and the thing just stopped moving. I don't know if that's meaning that it's dead, like I cooked its insides and it's actually, you know, uh, extinguished, or if maybe it's just curled up in a ball and is in a safety position, I have no idea. What I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to come back tomorrow and then see what this Aptasia is doing tomorrow. I'm not sure how long I should hold it on the Aptasia. Five minutes? I'm just kind of focusing it on the center mouth. 
once it retracts into its little hole, they're pretty exposed. You can kind of get right into the middle. I've heard, make sure your fish don't get in the way. If they get close, you just turn off the laser. You don't want to blind any of them. I don't think you could really harm them other than their eyes. But it's not like you could burn a hole in them. This laser is not that strong. Let me turn it off. See how it looks. Now, well, I feel like it's pretty well fried. Yeah, that's him right there. You can see, like, actually, I burned the coralline algae around him. I don't think they could, they could survive that. Okay, so you can see that I did a pretty good job of killing it yesterday, but let's see how it looks today. If we take a look at the area without the um, macro focus lens, you can actually see that red spot. That's where the coralline algae was kind of fried. From outward appearances, you can't really see any aptasia there. And even with the macro focus lens, it's pretty well gone. When I finished cooking them, I did a water change. And when I was taking the water out of the tank, I used my tube and I actually sucked the crevasse. And I actually saw some debris of the Aptasia come out. I would say that if you can get into the area where you burned the Aptasia to death, it does a good job to kind of get in there and try and suck whatever debris there is out. Now I won't know for sure in maybe a week or so, maybe it's, it's just hiding buried deep in its little crevasse. But I think for the most part, the laser did a pretty good job. I'm gonna have to do some laser work at the house tank tonight because that's where I have the highest concentration of Aptasia and it's really close to the glass. It'll give me a good opportunity to really test the thing out. But for now, on the office tank, on that one Aptasia, I'm giving it a pretty high score. It did take a little longer than I thought. Like I really had to focus the laser on it for a while before that Aptasia really stopped moving. I, I thought I was cooking it. The end result is a dead Aptasia from all outward appearances. That's a, that's a good thing. For all my waiting, for all my trying, I removed a couple of corals that were dying. I was trying to leave them in there to give them as much chance as possible to come back, but they just started dying too much and I figured if I went to Guangzhou, I'm leaving for a couple of days, if I left for a couple of days and they actually did completely die, the tissue would start to decay and it would just pollute the whole tank. So that is my poor elegance coral. He's been with me for a while, very sad. And this is my neon orange plate coral. And he was just obviously starting to just show his skeleton through, so I decided to pull him out before he got too bad. Sorry guys, I really didn't want to pull you out of that tank, but I think it's better for the overall tank habitat because my nitrates and everything are kind of going up and I don't want any dead tissue in there to, to make anything worse. I will probably replace those at the next Fishy Friday if I'm here in uh, Ningbo. I've been doing regular water changes and I feel like my levels are coming into a little bit of an equilibrium. I'm gonna do a water test right now and we'll see if my assumptions are correct. Okay, so what do these results mean? Let me tell you. Firstly, pH looks about 8.5. Nitrate pretty much always looks like zero. My ammonia looks a little bit high. I'd say it's a 0.25. My nitrate's a big problem. Orange, about 20 parts per million. Definitely a problem I'm gonna have to figure out pretty soon. Calcium's on the high end. I'd say I'm about 500 parts per million. KH is at about 8.5, almost nine. And magnesium and everything, I measured that yesterday. That's all good. Hey, just FYI, I am uh, looking at my computer as I do these tests because I made myself a really cool uh, test sheet set off of those sheets you get with API. Yeah, check this out. So I made these test sheets. This is the calcium, but also those the, the nitrates and all the other ones. 
The great thing about this is that this section right here that is really white and bright is a great place to contrast the color of the fluid alongside the other colors. So you can actually look at it and say, okay, this is about a 20. I made these for the Salifert and the API test kits. They're personal. I think they're pretty accurate. You can take a look for yourself. I'll leave links to them in the bottom of this video. I have a full testing uh, tutorial set that I made on Matt's Reef Tank a few, uh, geez, I think it was a few years back or a year back. I'll leave a link to that as well. So basically, I'm in a situation where I'm trying to still remove waste from the tank. It is not a pristine environment as far as waste goes. Uh, one of the things I've been doing is water changes. Obviously, that's the primary thing. But the other thing that you can do is uh, step up your protein skimmer. I have actually increased my skim. Uh, I'm really trying to actively skim the tank and get a lot of those nasty proteins out. Anyways, we're going to pick this up back at my house where we're going to try and kill some more Aptasia with that laser. Uh, I've got a loaded schedule and uh, I want to wrap this Matt's Reef Tank up so that you guys have some fun stuff to look at. A little bit more about that laser. It was about a hundred bucks, I think, and uh, I got it on an online store called Taobao here in China. They had even more powerful ones. Annie was asking if I wanted to get a five or a 10 uh, watt <laughs> one. I think I could burn a hole in a concrete wall with that. So I went with the two watt. It seemed like it's doing a good job. And uh, I'm just gonna have to wait and see if it, I'm gonna just gonna have to wait and see if it worked. And okay, so now I'm at the house. The house has the plagued Aptasia problem. And there's a rock that's actually in the front side of the tank right here that is covered with Aptasia. It's gonna make the perfect object to attack with this laser as sort of a test. Uh, again, before you start killing anything, the first thing you do is turn off the pumps and turn off the filters. Okay, now I've had to stop. I, I haven't finished even close to what I plan to do as far as the number of Aptasia to attack. I think that the amount of time you've got to point the laser at the target is longer than I had thought. As a matter of fact, the two batteries in the laser are hot. <laughs> They're completely spent and the laser has lost its intensity, so I stopped. I don't have time to charge it and try again before I edit this video, so I will just watch those few that I have attacked and see if the heat generated by the laser was enough to actually kill them. A few things. Seems like you have to attack them for quite some time and even after I was lasering them for two or three or four minutes they still seemed to be writhing. I find that a little bit odd. I was thinking that it would work a little bit quicker. Lasering rocks very close to the glass was much more effective than lasering across a long distance. I'm gonna charge these batteries, go on a bit of a trip to the other side of China. When I come back, maybe next, uh, next week, I will investigate the few Aptasia that I attacked today, as well as try to attack some new ones, and we'll see how it goes. So I'm gonna end this Matt's Reef Tank with that. Next Matt's Reef Tank, I think I'll do some more laser work and we'll try to bring my office tank back into equilibrium. I do a daily vlog. If you like uh, the reef tanks, then you might like my daily vlog because the reef tanks are part of it. China and riding trikes and flying drones and investigating Chinese culture. So if you're interested in that, please join my vlogs and subscribe to my uh, channel and view those. I know a bunch of you already have. Either way, uh, I'm gonna sign off. May your pH never waver 
may your nitrates never rise like mine are right now. <laughs> Bye. It's one thing I can say about those Aptasia. They are strong little durable bastards.